Alright guys, today I was going to show a little video of some current voltage on a solenoid on my oscilloscope. I got this new current clamp here. It's a Hantech CC65 and I was checking it out. wanted to just make a quick video. What I'm doing is I'm activating a coil and armature on a solenoid valve that I have. And uh, I'm going to show that here on the oscilloscope. Okay, the circuit that I have set up is just the coil connected to the power supply on the positive side through a switch. I've got the yellow trace set up to be voltage across the coil. I've got the blue trace set up to be current through the circuit. Alright, on the energizing side we see that we get full voltage immediately across the coil. On the current we get a ramping up of current towards maximum current until the point at which the magnetic forces have built up to pull in the armature. Once the armature starts to move, current takes a dip due to the changing inductance in the magnetic field. Once the armature finishes moving, current is allowed to continue to rise to maximum current in the circuit. The time between application of voltage to the bottom of this dip would be the opening response time or the uh, response time of the armature. Stroke time of the armature would be the time between the top of this dip to the bottom of this dip. On the de-energized side we see that the current is immediately brought to zero due to the opening of the switch. We get a large back EMF negative voltage spike due to the uh, co collapsing magnetic field and the fact that we open the switch and reduce the current flow quickly. The negative voltage spike, once the field starts to collapse, begins to rise back towards zero until at which point the magnetic force has decayed to the point that the spring on the armature can push it back to its initial position. Once the armature starts to move, you get an induced voltage from that which drives the voltage back negative again until the armature finishes moving, and at which point the magnetic field can continue to collapse and take the voltage back to zero. The closing response time would be the time between the opening of the switch to the bottom of this dip. The armature stroke time on, on de-energization would be the time between the top of this dip to the bottom of this dip. Okay, in this setup all I've done is added a general purpose rectifier diode in parallel with the coil and the diode has been oriented to block current in the direction when the switch is closed to allow current to flow through the coil and back to ground. However, when we open the switch, the back EMF generated by the coil is going to be limited to a low voltage, effectively allowing the current to flow through the diode and back through the coil again to dissipate the magnetic field energy in the resistance of the coil. Forward voltage on a rectifier diode is about 0.7 volts, so the back EMF is going to be limited to 0.7 volts, and we're also going to elongate the time taken for the magnetic field to collapse. Alright, so everything on the energized side looks exactly the same. On the de-energized side, we see the back EMF of the voltage has been limited to 0.7 volts so we've suppressed the back EMF voltage spike. We have also elongated the time that it takes the magnetic field to collapse out to about 100 milliseconds at this point where the voltage finally reaches zero. On the current we see that current is allowed to flow in this setup as opposed to before where there was no current flow so we get a decay of current down towards zero until at which point the magnetic field has uh, forces have collapsed to the point where the armature can move we get a rise in current due to the induced effects of the changing inductance as the armature moves in the magnetic field once the armature finishes moving current continues to decay to zero the blipping current that you see here with the double bump is probably due to the fact that the spring is stiff which means that when the magnetic force initially collapses to the point to allow the spring to move, the spring moves a little bit but loses a lot of force, at which point it's hung by the magnetic field until it collapses further and allows the spring to move the armature back to the initial position. So this is a hanging or bouncing of the armature as it returns to its initial position in the collapsing magnetic field. 
Okay, in this circuit, I've added a 30 volt Zener diode in series with the rectifier diode, the two in parallel with the coil. So with this setup, we will suppress the back EMF voltage on opening the switch to 30.7 volts. Okay, everything the same on the energized side. On the de-energized side, we see that we have in fact reduced the collapse time of the magnetic field simply because we allowed for a higher negative back EMF. In this case, we suppress the back EMF to 30 volts. Here we see the rising voltage back towards zero until the armature moves, at which point the voltage takes another negative dive looks like it wants to go below the clamp again so it clamps at 30 volts until the armature finishes moving the voltage is allowed to then decay back to zero as the magnetic field collapses okay guys in this setup exactly the same as it was before except I've placed a 15 volt Zener diode in there simply to show that Although we've limited back EMF to 15 volts, we have stretched out the magnetic field collapse time. We've also stretched out the time that it takes for the current to decay to zero. And again, we see the blip here in the current due to the induced effects of the changing inductance when the armature moves in the magnetic field. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed that little demonstration there on voltage suppression techniques with diodes uh, on the de-energizing of a magnetic coil and uh, looks like my current probe is working pretty good so with that I'll say goodbye and until next time